Breaking news, I'm offering an audio course in conservation biology. Details at the links in the description of this video. With respect to the topic of extinction of all life on Earth, a paper by Neves and colleagues published January 9th, 2020, also in Scientific Reports, the same renowned journal in which Strona and Bradshaw published their work. And in this paper, they point out that tardigrades the go-to species for people who believe that we cannot possibly drive all species to extinction, tardigrades too, are sensitive to high temperatures. Here's the take-home line. Global warming is already having harmful effects on habitats worldwide and is therefore important to gain an understanding of how rising temperatures may affect extant animals. Tardigrades are renowned for their ability to tolerate extreme conditions but their endurance towards high temperatures clearly has an upper limit. High temperatures thus seem to be their Achilles heel. In other words, even tardigrades probably will not survive global high temperatures. If tardigrades don't make it, I can guarantee against all of my best wishes that humans will not make it as well. More about Extinction of All Life on Earth, a paper by Trisos and colleagues published April 8, 2020 in Nature, entitled The Projected Timing of Abrupt Ecological Disruption from Climate Change, indicates the following information. We project that future disruption of ecological dis assemblages as a result of climate change will be abrupt. And that's no big surprise because it's already abrupt. So even if we continue at the current pace, which is abrupt, we're still going to be facing abrupt climate change. They go on, will be abrupt because within any given ecolo ecological assemblage, the exposure of most species to climate conditions beyond their realized niche limits occurs almost simultaneously. Under a high emissions scenario, such abrupt exposure events begin before 2030. These results highlight the impending risk of sudden and severe biodiversity losses from climate change and provide a framework for predicting both when and where these events may occur." End quote. It's already happening. We're already into the decade before the 2030s. Already we are experiencing abrupt climate change. This paper by Trisos and colleagues focused specifically on ocean life. As indicated by Captain Paul Watson, founder of Sea Shepherd, quote, if the oceans die, we die. We can't live on this planet with a dead ocean, end quote. And that, according to Trisos and colleagues from their paper published about a year and a half ago, is where we're headed. Disruption of ecological assemblages leading to loss of life in the ocean. Sadly, there are more means by which we can destroy all life on Earth. A paper by Owens and colleagues in the May 20th, 2021 issue of Solar Physics titled Extreme Space Weather Events in the Solar Cycle indicates that a solar storm, such as the September 1st and 2nd, 1859 Carrington event, could cause sufficient disruption of electromagnetic systems to sufficiently reduce aerosol masking. This would lead to an abrupt rise in global average temperatures, as I already pointed out. This increase, this rapid increase in global average temperature would threaten all life on Earth with extinction. According to a paper published in phys.org on June 1st, 2021, titled Ancient Volcanic Eruption Destroyed the Ozone Layer, I don't know how it could be any more clear than that. That's the title. Ancient volcanic eruption destroyed the ozone layer. We need the ozone layer like we need those other species for our continued persistence on Earth. The coinciding peer-reviewed article was published in Communications Earth and Environment entitled The Toba Supervolcano Eruption Caused Severe Tropical Stratospheric Ozone Depletion. That's terrifying. Ozone depletion causes an enormous increase in radiation striking the earth, including striking humans, and will lead to extremely high rates of cancer, 
in a rapidly overheated earth. There's a reason the Montreal protocols were followed with respect to chlorofluorocarbons in an attempt to reduce the size of the ozone hole over the Antarctic. And the reason is that we lose habitat, we lose the ability to persist on this most beautiful of planets when the ozone goes away. So this paper from April 12, 2021 in the renowned Nature series of journals, Communications, Earth and Environment, indicates that the, the Toba supervolcano eruption caused severe tropical stratospheric ozone depletion that was from one volcano from one volcano. We can only imagine the kind of ozone loss that will result from the catastrophic uncontrolled meltdown of nuclear power plants, for example, which there are more than 450 around the globe. We can only imagine what is going on already with respect to increased volcanism resulting from abrupt climate change. Another means of extinction of all life on Earth comes from of all places, a politician. President Nianisto of Finland said on August 28, 2017, quote, if we lose the Arctic, we lose the globe. That is reality. He was speaking with President Trump in a press conference in the Oval Office at the time. If we lose the Arctic, we lose the globe. That is reality. And I suspect what he was referring to was the loss of albedo or reflectance when we lose the ice on the Arctic Ocean. Arctic ice is the planetary air conditioner. And if we lose that ice and convert this reflective white substance, snow and ice, if we convert that instead to a dark blue ocean color, we will lose an enormous amount of albedo in a very short period of time. That albedo, or reflectance, is what allows us to persist on this relatively cool planet right now. This just in, I'm offering an audio course in conservation biology. Details can be found in the links in the description just beneath this video.